Hát ott lege, mama. Kör. A million, million leg. Lahpáze tudsz amit lenni, tudtáts talpáze tép nap a honnan. Konkrétna. Oké. That's weird. It's live now. Okay. Okay, we're here. <laughs> um, all right. A nice welcome to all of you today, again on the sixth traditional live webinar from, from Mixed Analog. Mix Analog team. Hi. Um, we we have a tendency to act weird just be before all of this happened and we start talking because there's a lot of latency with YouTube and we're not sure if. Um, the streaming actually works. Um, so, sorry about that. <laughs> until it's too late and we've already um, talked for five minutes in Slovenian before everything happens. But now we're here. Um, and today we have, say, three basic topics to, to talk about. Yeah. Um, and yeah, oh, hello, uh, real home recording. Yeah, hello, guys. Uh, Nice to have you here. So, what should we simply dive in into the so into what we've read? It, first or? off, uh, the idea behind these webinars is that you guys can have as many questions as you like in the following hour, and we will answer them as we see them. This time, we're a bit better prepared. We have a laptop with us to see <laughs> the questions, so you won't be looking at us going like, "Oh, what's this?" Uh, okay. So uh, prepare your questions and uh, we'll try to answer them in between. And we have three different kind of topics. They're not super long, but uh, uh, a combination of news and maybe some questions for, for you guys so that you can help us make Mixanalog better. Okay. And with that, I think we can um, start with the first theme. Sure. Yeah. So the new page and more specifically uploads. We've done, uh, we've got some feedback uh, now for uh, for a few months actually mm. that the upload speed could be better and uh, quite a few guys found out that uploading to Dropbox or Google Drive is uh, faster than uploading to Mix Analog. That's of course uh, quite normal because those guys can have these huge um, data centers all over the world and uh, you're actually not far from one physically usually. So if you're for example from Brazil uh, there's a data center very nearby where your data ends up. And if you are using Mixanalog, well, there's only one data center <laughs> one, right now. In one second-hand computer from eBay. It's uh, is, is storing <laughs> your stuff and uh, it's far away. So, of course, it takes a lot more time. So, what could we do to make that experience better for you guys? We found out that we can actually use Dropbox or uh, Google Drive as a buffer between... Um, us and you so that you can actually upload to Dropbox or Google Drive and then we can download from them. I know it sounds weird, but that actually works better. So um, we've been preparing to do that um, for a few months now. We've had some issues in the beginning, but now uh, the latest tests are quite, mm -hmm. quite good. So um, we will be dropping this soon, uh, first as a part of the um, app where you make the bookings and where you upload uh, the files. So in that section where you make the reservation, you'll be able to upload the files uh, through Dropbox or Google Drive. And uh, everywhere else, it will still be the good old fashioned direct to mix analog upload. So we'll kind of have both for a week or so, so we can see that there's no regression that you can all still use it. Yeah, we're probably not going to abandon the just normal fashion of Definitely. uploading file from your computers but um, if you're diligent enough to plan so much in advance uh, you can probably speed up the process of uploading uh, simply by going through the one of the Th cloud through services. the new one yeah um, and the new upload uh, dialogue that we have i think we showed it at the previous uh, webinar number five mm. um, you can still upload directly from your device so that's just an optimization step that you can do now, uh, right, right soon, in uh, in the reservation, uh, so that you will be able to go through a, a cloud service, or direct, whatever is your preference. 
so I think that covers that thing. Yeah. And uh, we should be talking about the progress on our new page. I think you've seen that uh, some of the stuff on our page, on our web page, is missing, like the DZI and the 1176 mm -hmm. details. There's uh, some info that we have on the blog, that we have on Facebook, but we don't actually have on our web page. And there's a reason for that. It's that the updating of our web page um, used to be quite simple, but now it's not. Uh, the technology behind it is a bit old, so uh, it's very tedious. <clears throat> and um, we decided and also showed you in the webinar number five uh, a sneak preview of uh, a simpler design, a bit easier to use, a bit easier to navigate, and especially easier for us to update content on. And uh, we've done some significant progress on that. Mm -hmm. So. Giga, do you have um, our new web page? The new web ready? page? No, not, not quite. But I'll try. Let's see if it works. It's called Next. Yeah, this one. Okay. And if you do. Now I'll have to go. Okay, here we are. I'll just move us around here. In the corner where we belong. <laughs> All right, so um, the new page will look something like that, uh, yep. very, very much so. Um, and the new upload um, experience that Boyan was talking about previously happens here. Happens here. Um, yes. So actually, we forgot to mention this link functionality. So um, all the other, um, let's say, file sharing. Yeah. Um, platforms. So to be complete yep. uh, about the, the ways to upload uh, the WAV files to Mixanalog, you can have four ways. You can do it directly from your computer, from a Google Drive account, from a Dropbox account, or from a web link. And this web link is if you have um, uploaded a file somewhere um, where on the, on the internet, like where if it's a direct link to the file, you so can put that in. We transfer links are working in this. I not? don't think so. Okay, so if it's if it's an indirect link to just yeah. another service, it's probably not going to work. Exa yeah. But if there's something that says something something slash something dot wave, yeah, then it's probably going to work. That's probably going to work. All right. So that's for the upload. Um, yeah. Let's see if if we have the new one. Can you just scroll quickly? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to yeah. be the new, new version. So quite a few um, changes, or let's say prog mm -hmm. progress. Um, the uh, no, this is not loading. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's a work in progress. <laughs> it's a very definitely a work in progress. Um, but uh, hopefully, oh, it loaded. Cool. So actually, not that bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, what what we're trying to achieve with with the new web page is actually what we've learned from um, talking to you via intercom or via email or Facebook or just um, maybe uh <laughs> sneaking on your on your web browsing habits just um, nothing nothing really personal just um, where where you scroll what you click and what you don't find and stuff like that um, we kind of try to figure out what what stuff to put front and center yeah. on the landing page and what to omit completely. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that um, the, the new page is going to be much more enjoyable to, to look at, to navigate, and to get the info that you really want to see. Yeah, so it's optimized a bit for uh, someone who is new to Mix Analog. We believe there are like you know, tens of thousands of people out there who don't know what we do. And we'd just love to, um, for those people to get an experience when they come to this web page to understand what it's all about and to get to a processed file like as fast as possible. Because I think with our service, it sounds so like new and um, different from what you're used to mm -hmm. that, you know, if you, if you don't give it a try, it's actually hard to explain how it works and how well it works and what kind of results you'll get. You just have to try it. So we're trying to optimize that a bit. 
Uh, we already have a few questions. It's, uh, of course, about the tape. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so I'm curious if you wouldn't mind saying what tape formula brand you're using in the Telefunken machine, also the length of the reel, also users cannot accidentally rewind the machine. Uh, first, we are using a BASF tape. BASF, yeah. Um, I'm not sure which formula or which model, uh, but we are probably going to switch to, uh, I think it's recording the masters. Exactly, yeah. Um, it's a, um, the, the point is we are trying to figure out how to get our hands on brand new, not new old stock tape because the uh, new old stock tape is going to be harder and harder to get. Any and chance. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's aged. And it's uh, no, no, no two ways about it. So oh. it, it does not last as long as a brand new reel of tape. I think the best way to put it is the tape that you buy that's been somewhere on a shelf for 20 odd years, um, the, like the number one reason why tape dies why you have to change it is mechanical mm. usage it's not electrical usage you could electrically you could use it many many more times than you could mechanically but the process of it winding 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 all the time actually uh the the glue cracks mm. and uh the stuff that's glued on to um the plastic of the yeah, tape the, the metal oxide that shuts down and um so buying something old like that in this case, in this particular case, you do get the old formula, but you also get very old glue, <laughs> and that glue will deteriorate mm. rapidly. So we're going to try out the MTG or, or RTG, something like that. Yeah. I think it's RTG, right? Recording the crates, the masters, RTM, maybe? I think it's recording the masters. Yeah, RTM then. But it's readily available. Yeah, we just um, need to find out how to wind it up because our machine has the a AEG spools. Yeah, so we have to get our hands on the, the spool converters. Yeah, and so, so, so if, there's any, if there's any tape um, masters out there who know how to do this easily and pain-free just let us know yeah <laughs> we'd love to get a few tips on how to get this new tape we can get old tape in aeg format but we need to find out how to get the new tape wound up yeah it's without like taking two hours every time and yeah so. but we'll, we'll figure is there it a out. trick um and i think that um the length was i think a thousand meters so oh, really? it's 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, 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 true. I think we actually have to shorten it just a little bit to get everything on the reel because we are adding some um, zebra lead, some transparent lead, all the different kinds of um, lead tape just to um, enable the machine to do the automatic sensing of yeah. and both ends of tape. Um, exactly. So yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a challenge to get the the big reel on the on the machine but um you s you still get 45 minutes of of playback from from one reel without rewinding yeah so it's uh we shorten it just a little bit to get uh rewinding and uh, auto stop to work but mm -hmm. most of the 1000 meters are still available i think yeah, we only yeah. cut off about two meters maybe on each end yeah yeah it's not it's not much yeah it's not much something like that um, all right and for the accidentally rewinding, no, that's that's not possible. Yeah, um, there's an algorithm for that, and that's the only way that the tape will rewind. Um, so it will rewind either when you are in playback mode, when you're um, in live mode, actually, and you are, are arriving at the end of the tape, then it will rewind automatically. And that takes about two minutes, a minute A little and a less. Half. I think a minute and... 38 seconds <laughs> I, I might be wrong but I, I think it's a little a little under two minutes right and uh, the other way for it to rewind is when you go to the bounce uh, dialog and you say you'd like to have a bounce made if the length of the bounce plus the current position on the tape would exceed the tape or come within like 10% of the end then it will rewind before the bounce so you don't ac accidentally run out of tape when bouncing. Now we we did receive a few um, yeah, like we've had some feedback. Yeah, that it's, it's not that. working perfectly, mm -hmm. but uh, we're looking into that. So hopefully it'll be 
more precise. It does work most of the time, I think. But we'd like mm -hmm. to, of course, make it work uh, like every time. time. <laughs> yeah, of course. So we'll do that. Uh, okay. Um, so any more questions? Let's see. Yeah. In the future, would it be possible to convert files to FLAC on the servers for faster downloading? So I'll assume here you mean the bounces themselves. Um, sure. That's actually not, not a bad idea at all. Um, it would save about 50% on the download size, I think, about there. It's 1.7, I think. I'd say 40, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the Between usual, the third and a half, yeah, so. usual bitrate of flag files usually comes within, right. I think, 700 kilobits per second, roughly. Um, which means that's yeah, actually that's half of the, yeah, the standard bitrate. So yeah, yeah, could could be useful. Exactly. So um, we could do that. We'll add it to our backlog, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not super hard to do. So definitely on the list. Yeah. Yep. Th thanks for a nice suggestion. Definitely. That's that's exactly why we are doing those webinars. Um, so we hope we would get more of those. Oh yeah. And uh, going further, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Real Home Recording is happy for the looks of our webpage. That's awesome, super cool. Thank you. Um, um, let's let's go to our second topic of three topics. Yeah. It's um, it's about maintenance. And we have a pretty cool picture about that. Yeah, let's switch to that. Here it Here is. is. Ah, beauty. So this um, beautiful little thing is a uh, tube tester that we're building. Um, the reason to have one is because most of our mastering gear and most of the gear that actually does take a beating uh, quite a lot in the, um, just normal usage all the time is tube gear. Mm. The tubes themselves will go bad in time and they will derate in time. So we need to do something about that. And uh, but first, we need to find out when it happens and to which tube it happens. In the Fairchild, there's, what, 20 odd, maybe even more yeah. tubes. Now, when, when the Fairchild acts up or, you know, something happens, something wonky happens with the stereo image, now, which one of those 20 odd tubes is it? And how much has it derated? Can we just swap two and uh, go on with that do we need to replace it with a new one when do we need to do that and which tubes do we need to have uh, on hand are all kind of questions that we'd like to answer in the future so that when something happens we can fix it like faster than we can mm. do right now i think you've all noticed that the fairchild is uh, now a free to use product and that's uh, part of the reason is that uh, it has derated slightly in stereo and we'd like to find out which of the many tubes are to blame and to replace them uh, and then to start cataloging like every week or two weeks mm. what's happening with the tube so that we can predict when we need new ones and uh, and buy them uh, with that in mind uh, we also got uh, very good tips from uh, Jiref audio yeah from Denmark Jakub Berlund. exactly shout out to Jakub mm -hmm. Great guy, uh, great gear. If you don't know about uh, Giraffe Audio, do check them out. Um, it's all tube-based, awesome gear. Um, so being a tube-based guy, so he does everything with tubes. We talked uh, with him at length about you know, how, to, how to make this work, how to make mm -hmm. a, a tube-based studio, so to speak, um, work 24 seven. And uh, one of the suggestions was, you, know, you have to have a good, good tube guy and he got us connected to a good tube guy. <laughs> so in the future, um, we're hoping to replace quite a few of our uh, stock tubes with better tubes. Mm -hmm. So we already have very cool tubes on the, on the Pultex, for example, but we're hoping yeah, those, to- those are something special. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The, they are, we've, we've selected, I think between, I have selected between six different pairs to then finally arrive at the a, a pair that really works well for me mm -hmm. it really has this euphonic sound i was uh, checking them out really for sound not longevity or 
electronics or anything. It was just like sound, what sounds the best. And those really, really sound the best to me. Um, so we hope to get more of those just in case because they won't mm -hmm. last forever. Yeah, sure. The, these are only available as new old stock. So mm -hmm. um, once they are run out, it's, it's over. <laughs> Yeah. They don't make them anymore. So we need to stock up on those, and mm. or at least find someone who has stocked up on those and can supply us for a good time. Mm. I would really not like to change the sound of the Poltex. I'm super happy with the way they are. Um, Actually, that's, that's one of the big factors on why all the different variations of um, Pultec EQs, all based on the same design, the circuit, it's very straightforward, it's not complicated. It's not a lot of components, but then again, there's so much different Pultec um, clones, recreations, what have you, um, and they all sound different, which is kind of strange, but um, being a simple design with very few components, that gives, the, gives us a chance to hear each and every one of them. Um, True, yeah. And that's why the, the choice of um, inductors, transformers, um, capacitors, um, and tubes definitely tubes makes a big difference yep. and um, that's that's why um, we still think we have an edge compared to some of the cheaper um, yeah. cheaper clones of the Pultec design uh, because we don't have to make 10,000 of them exactly yeah so that's one of the benefits of operating a, an online solution like this is you can you can choose the best mm -hmm. and live with it because uh, there's only one but really special piece of gear that you make uh, and that's the only one you need to make mm -hmm. so we're hoping to make many more for you <laughs> <laughs> in in that same you know spirit. quality standard yeah spirit so there are a few questions now uh, during some bounces I have heard a white noise sound at the very end of the track are you guys aware of this and uh, if so are you close to a solution uh, actually we're not like super aware of this. Um, no, so it might have been mentioned a few times in the chat, really rarely. So when that ha does happen, we do encourage you guys, if you are having some strange, um, any sort of strange phenomenon in the, in the bounces, um, send them to us. Send us the source file and send us the, the, the result that you got. Just we transfer it to, to our link. I think you could just use support at uh, mixanalog.com. Mm. That one will get routed to me and Giga, so um, feel free to use that. Um, so if it does happen, yeah, we'll take a look. Mm. And there's, there's, uh, we've, we've, when we designed Mixanalog back in, yeah, months ago, the last iteration of the playback engine, we did a lot of tweaking to make sure that this doesn't happen, but doesn't mean it can't happen. So um, it would be good to catch the last of the bugs and, you know, take off the beta, the, the beta uh, label off. Yeah, off yeah, of we're analog, so we're really um, kind of um, eager to yeah. to get the product to a level that we can confidently. Um, yeah, say that with confidence. Yeah, it's it's out there and it's not beta. It's yeah. you know fully just useful. Mm. Um, so yeah, the mix and lock three, but three point something is well, well underway. True. Um, still a lot of things to do, but um, yeah. We've learned a lot with the first version and the second version of mix analog. So we know that we did a few things technologically um, in a way that we'd never do them again this this way. But it's a part of a learning process. So um, definitely, you know the next version, the next major release uh, will be designed so something like quite a few things that worked better in the first version will be taken from there and quite a few things that are working really solid now in the second version will stay. Um, so that will be kind of the, is the basis actually for the third version. But the most important, like the, the like most important uh, metric for what Mix Analog version 3 should be is reliability so mm. that's kind of the most important thing that we're aiming for um, we've tried many things in the past and now we think we have a pretty good idea on what works and what doesn't technically so the next one should be super stable and uh, feedback like this when something doesn't doesn't happen correctly in the bounce uh, yeah that will help us make it even more so mm. 
All right. So, okay, yeah, I think um, with the maintenance, that's pretty much it. We just, yeah, just wanted to convey that um, these machines are analog machines. They can and do deteriorate over time, especially if they're on 24 seven and used a lot. Uh, in the past, we kind of got away with um, checking them every now and then. Mm. Um, but there comes a time when this has to be a bit more like automated and a bit more like yeah, streamlined, uh, if nothing else. Exactly, streamlined and automated, and maybe even you know having a, a good solid schedule that other people can follow, mm. so that they know it. Like the the Fairchild will be offline every second week on Wednesday at eleven for one hour, so mm -hmm. that we can test all of the tubes. So stuff like that needs to happen, so that we can have a. Um, that we know that the, the Fairchild always works and that we can uh, kind of mm, say, okay, these tubes are getting bad. It's still not in the range where it will actually stop working, mm -hmm. but it will stop working correctly in yeah, four weeks or something. If this happens, then we yeah. have to like really seriously change the tubes in two weeks or 10 days or yeah. what have you. <coughs> so it's predicting the... Exactly, predicting when, when it's going to fail mm -hmm. or at least derate uh, more than half a dB or something mm -hmm. like that. And in that case, you know, when we know that it's going to happen in, in two or four weeks, we should like definitely start replacing the tubes and mm -hmm. so on. Hi, PM Productions. Thank you for the Elysia um, video. Mm -hmm. That was an uh, awesome video. I really enjoyed it. I don't speak Italian, but um, I still enjoyed it. So <laughs> thank you so much for doing it. So going uh, forward, I think we should we should be talking about the subs. Yeah, sure. So there are no like new questions. So we should just go on with our third mm. theme, which is subscriptions. So we've we've deployed subscriptions. I believe was it somewhere between webinar three and four, like a few weeks ago. I think. Yeah, two ten weeks ago, ten weeks. days ago, or something like that. Something I think like that. S shortly before the the last webinar. Yep. We'd like to definitely thank you guys who have subscribed. It's good. Uh, you know, it shows yeah, some commitment. It shows some commitment. <laughs> so thank you so much to do, for doing that. Um, for those of you who are considering it or are thinking, you know, I don't know if this is a good deal or there's some noise coming from mm. the background. I hope, I hope it goes away. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, we're going to go away. All right. Just go closer to the mic and it's going to be okay. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's cuddle in. Yeah. Um. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. So anyway, um, subscriptions. Yeah. If you are thinking about getting it, um, but there's something, you know, missing, or if you think it's a bad deal or any reason at all why you wouldn't want it, just let us know. We'd really like to um, talk Make with you about it and, yeah. and see what's missing and fix that for you. Uh, as we said before on the on the fifth on the fifth um, webinar, um, the subscriptions are here to help us better um, model the, the future for us. Mm -hmm. And if that's um, something that we can do, this is so so fun. Yeah, don't. <laughs> so um, to better model the future and when we can do that, then we can bring in more expensive gear and better gear uh, and more of it. So the better we know what to expect in the next few months, uh, the better gear can, can you can expect from us. Yeah. And speaking about gear, there's another there's question. There's a question, yeah, about um, um, what, what are the upcoming gears? that we're going to add to Mix Analog, uh, please two or three, two to three of them. I think we know at least for f three of them. We do. Uh, so probably the first one is going to be the audio destruction unit. Yes. Which is actually something in the league of um, Culture Vulture. Culture Vulture or um, the Black Box. The HG. Black Box. Yep. Yeah. Um, with just a little bit, bit more functionality, a little bit more flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a analog tube-based saturator box uh, with MS, with um, 
of course, uh, parallel blend mix, right, um, and all that. Um, so, whistles? if if I recall correctly, it has two different overdrives, five different like frequency slash peaking kind of like uh, yeah, filtered, modes, filters, filtered exactly overdrives. filters. It has a triad and pentoed mode, and um, a gain stage basically. Mm. So you can you can use it just for warming up stuff or like for full on guitar amp territory um, distortion. Yeah, the, the it, it will do all of that. Um, so the analog part of that is done now for some mm -hmm. time. And there's actually um, if you take a look at our channel in the archives, there's a very old uh, video. I think it's all, almost a year old um, of the audio coming mm -hmm. off of, uh, from the audio destruction unit. So. Um, yeah, you, you can, can look at that. search our YouTube channel and in the uh, archives, you can yeah, probably yeah. find it there. And we'll link it probably in the, in yeah. the description below sure. so that for you guys coming in later, you can uh, take a look at that one, mm. uh, see what it sounds like. So, And after that, somewhere in the pretty near future, mm -hmm. the um, Elysius Empressor is on exactly. its way. Yeah. Um, and then there's probably going to be LA-2A. The LA-2A, Somewhere yeah. in the, let's and, say... And that one's nice. Mid to near future. So it's a stereo LA-2A mm -hmm. to start with. And it's got two sets of uh, optical cells. So it's got a fast and a slow optical cell. So it's small. It can go LA-3A-ish, LA LA kind of in, in the um, speed department. Mm -hmm. But the circuit is all LA-2A, and it's uh, got very nice RCA uh, American tubes and uh, original transformers from um, uh, UTC. The, UTC, exactly, from the Universal Transformer Company, something like hmm. that. It's, uh, it's an awesome box. Hmm. It's also one of those where, like the Poltex, I've done a lot of research on what sounds good and tried so many things, and, you know, wouldn't wouldn't you like uh i don't know i've tried a few things and in the end the original 70s components that are inside the the la2a as it is right now mm -hmm. just you know hands down they win uh, mm -hmm. I've, i have some modern um opto cells available and it's um they just don't they don't sound the same they don't react the same on the transients mm -hmm. that when when the kick drum like goes away like when, when, when you have a decay from the kick drum that envelope is something magical and the original Uray uh, LA-2A uh, cells that, that we've put on, uh, into our own so that's really special and we, yeah, we hope to, to put that one online mm -hmm. uh, after the, the tube unit so there's also of course the Elysia that uh, Giga mentioned but there's also a better maker um, what is it? Is it the, the, the stereo compressor? The stereo mastering compressor. Yeah. Because they'll be making two kinds of, of compressor, actually a light version and a mastering version. And we'll be getting the mastering version, yes. uh, I believe, as soon as it hits the first demo users from the, um, from the distributors. So mm -hmm. it's hopefully we can do it fast enough that, we'll be, that you'll be able to try it even before it hits the shops. Yeah. So that would be like really cool. Mm. Um, yeah. So that's some of the gear that's coming. We're also uh, not far away from deploying the uh, blending functionality, right? Yeah. So as you, we have the, um, from the compressors, we have the VCA and we have the, the Fairchild. And none of those have a wet dry blend functionality or a real mid-side matrix like the the... Um, Fairchild has its own lateral vertical matrix, but it's yeah, not... Yeah, it has one major drawback, and that is that you cannot, with the gain knobs, yeah. you cannot change the, the ratio between the mid and the side channel, uh, which, um, in effect, is... If you really want to have this widening effect from, from the mid-side matrix, you have to play with the threshold and the compression to get the ratio between the mid and the side channel different. Mm -hmm. which is maybe not what you were set out to do in the first place because you, you then have to compress. Yeah, but um, you're talking about using the Fairchild 
creatively. Yeah. It was a, as opposed when it was new, uh, when when the Fairchild was a new thing, um, the lateral vertical matrix was used to control the amount of displacement from the right and from the lathe writing head. Mm. So it makes total sense the way it's set up for for that particular task. Mm. But right now in in the digital era, when we just want the Fairchild sound, it's uh, it's a bit of a drawback. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. So. Um, with the mid-side matrix and the dry wet, uh, we call them sidecars. So it's analog devices that we put alongside a compressor or an EQ. Mm. Uh, with those installed, you would be able to get a real mid-side matrix in front of um, the Fairchild. Yeah. So you could actually use the left and the right input gain controls to change the gain of the left and right um, channel. Oh, the mid and the side in this case, right? After the matrix. Mm -hmm. So I think that's all we have for the analog, um, like new gear that's that's confirmed. Yeah. So these are all confirmed. These none of these are like hypothetical. There mm -hmm. are hypothetical new gear that uh, that we have in mind. Uh, well, the, the summing mixer is also pretty much electronically done, uh, but unfortunately it. Um, it requires a whole new set of converters yeah. and because um, we have to, well, by the, the, the general ethic of, of this company uh, is not about mediocre sound. So we're not just yeah. going to get another off the shelf 24 or 32 channel converter just to get the channel count and be done with. If we're doing this, if we are after that great analog sound, then of course we have to take care of the conversion, that it's really high grade. Um, so you're not losing more with another ADDA conversion that you would gain from analog experience. Yeah. And in this way, the 24 channels of conversion that we need to add to our system in order to make the, the summing mixer work is going to be pretty expensive. Um, of course. So yeah, that's that's put on hold. But for, we do want to do that. Yeah. So it's definitely not a no because we've already designed and actually built some of the analog parts, mm. um, but it's, it's a journey, right? So we're gonna first take care of the bus processing and uh, mastering kind of experience. And then maybe when the time is right, when we can afford it, we'll go for a summing experience and so on mm. and in the summing department the idea is to go first just summing and then line amps and DQs in, in in every channel of course you know that you can choose yeah so we are aiming actually in the long run we are aiming for a complete mixing console practically with complete channel strips available online yeah exactly so in the end you'd be able to do uh, a mix at mix analog, which is in the name, so <laughs> yeah. like an analog mix on mix analog. Yeah. So, um, but but it's a bit in the future, so mm. hopefully soon. Yeah, there there was one question. Of course, also. there's a question here about our 1176. Why is it so hard to distort? And uh, actually, it is based on a revision A, or I would say even it follows the schematic of the revision A. Uh, so it's not only based on it; it is in a revision A in terms of the circuitry. Now, in terms of gain staging and calibration, that's where I think, you know, we might be getting some uh, difference. Yep. So we've had this debate already internally, me and Giga, about the, the gain staging of the 1176, because, yeah, it sounds great, I think, but, um, you know, it, it can be hard to gain stage around because the, the threshold it's kind of late. Yeah, it's it's set quite a bit higher. So we are thinking about two options. One is just um, calibrating the uh, converters that are feeding and receiving the audio from the the level seventy six to just max out the level on those. Yeah. So you can really destroy the unit with just pure level from the converters. And, and I think we should kind of pause here just for one little second, which is why it's set up like this right now. Mm -hmm. The thing is for fixed gear, like 1176, that has a dedicated like analog channel going out from, from mm -hmm. the converse and back, we take a look at the data sheet 
and we calibrate the ADDA conversion to hit a certain level that's normal, that's a zero view or plus four view yep. on the unit. And we might have been quite a bit, um, I don't know. Well, we follow the rules very strictly. Exactly. So we got into the, into the levels range that the designers of the unit yeah. expected. And uh, well, I guess that's for, for maybe the guitarists, a, you could say it's called biased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, but do continue, sorry. Yeah, the, the, the point is that at the time that this unit was designed, it was not in any case designed to be a distortion box or um, the, the effects of saturation were something that was desired, but it was to be avoided at all costs. The design is the best that they could do yeah. at the time with as low distortion as possible. And then we, the, the new kids, come... come um, yeah, and you just smash the yeah. level inside and... <laughs> We, we kind of, we didn't want that to be the default experience. Mm. But I think in doing so, we might have robbed some of you guys who want to smash it uh, of, of that possibility because yeah. it's, it's set so cold. So I think we should just, you know, see if we can increase that. Yeah, either calibrate it to lower levels. So it will start compressing sooner. With the threshold, yeah. Um, so that's one option. Yeah. And the other option is, of course, give it a dedicated ADDA it loop. It has a dedicated ADDA um, loop, actually. Yeah. Um, but, but it needs to be calibrated higher in yeah. this case. That's yeah, just to be precise. Yeah. So that's it on that question. Um, OK. So right. Would it be possible? So there's also um, Majotra, I hope. That's the I'm pronouncing yeah. it right saying that uh, with little money on mix analog he can make very great results well yeah that's great power to you mm. uh thank you so much for saying this um that's why that's why we're doing it mm. and um a question from pm productions will there be a way to create personalized racks for complete mastering process into one session for 1176 music u limiter into the same session window all right so i think we already discussed this some time ago, but uh, it's just such a popular question. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no harm in uh, answering it um, a lot of times. So we do want to do that. Yep. The, the custom, we, we call this the, the custom products, because right now you have a fixed product. You have a rack one uh, mastering chain, and it's a certain um, pull tech followed by AVCA followed by, followed by a precision EQ followed by a precision limiter going back to the AD, and uh, that makes sense because then to to make those uh, fixed it makes sense because then we can just com uh, connect them with wires instead of making an ADDA conversion in between every um, step. So if we did that, then it would be you know quite a bad mastering chain from our perspective because you're doing so many ADDA conversions. Mm -hmm. But going from wires to something that, uh, you know, we, we don't have someone in the control room going, OK, so we'll take these two going into the music queue and we'll patch those into the precision EQ. We don't quite have uh, have that or to be more like precise, we do have that, but it's not finished. So. I yes, guess. it's it's on its way. Um, but it will require quite a substantial um, upgrade to the to the UI to the user interface. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that again we are um, bumping against the size of our team and the work that has to be done to make Sadly. this a reality. Yeah, but let's not um, whine. I mean, this yeah. is this is something that needs to be done. We'll do it. Mm. Just we'll need a bit more time to finish. Uh, we don't want to give you a half-assed solution here, um, you know. But it but it will come in pieces. So first, uh, we want to make it possible to bypass stuff, so that um, this wire that goes, for example, for to the music queue and then from the music queue to I don't know um, some some VCA, for example, compressor that would be a good combo actually. Mm -hmm. um, so that you could bypass that to go directly to the VCA, so you can just hear with with the music queue bypassed or vice versa, you know, bypass mm -hmm. just uh, the VCA, so to hear just the EQ. So that's the first step. 
And then the second step would be to, within the session, to be able to change the order. So you could say VCA first and then EQ or, you know, go the other way around and have the EQ first. So uh, that's the second step. And the third step, of course, the one we're all waiting for and very eager to do uh, is that you will be able to just say, okay, so what do I need to master today? It's, it's, a, it's a jazz um, album. So <laughs> it's a jazz album. So um, yeah, let's go with the, with the Poltec definitely. Let's go with uh, the Fairchild, okay. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going with the Better Maker Limiter. And sure. yeah, you know. Nice, nice taste. It's <laughs> <laughs> if I do say so myself. Um, yeah, so that would be the end game for, mm. for this system. We call it the, the Pathfinder. Um, like electronically, it's done. Uh, we've tested it uh, a lot. It works. It's just the software that's lagging before, uh, like, like always, of course. <laughs> um, all right, we have um, another question, which is, um, when is the looping function coming in? I think if we promise it, then we'll jinx it. But <laughs> Like yeah, it's been if on we the say table it's going to be in two weeks some or something, time. then mm -hmm. we'll just jinx it and it won't be in two weeks because life will happen. But generally speaking, as soon as possible, as soon as we can make it. We've already done the, the graphics design, like uh, where to put the handles and uh, where to put the button for looping and not looping. So that's all going to happen in the waveform display at the bottom, logically. And the repeat button would be next to the play button, logically. So. All of that's already thought out. We just need to find the block of time to do it and to make sure that you know it doesn't crash stuff. So that uh, if you don't use the looping function, you're still getting the same results as you are. And if you are using the looping function, that no weird stuff happens, like you get an infinite download with 60 minutes of your one loop going on all the time. <laughs> because you know we could we could totally do that. Yeah. Um, Accidentally. Uh, exactly. Unintentionally. Unintentionally. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, that's uh, definitely on the table and we'd like, we'd love to do it because in, for example, in a mastering situation, you really want to concentrate on the loudest part mm -hmm. a lot of the time. So um, to loop that and just go, okay, let's set the thresholds, let's set, let's set uh, the release especially mm -hmm. to work on the loudest part of the song, um, that would be I think workflow wise it would help a lot so um, hopefully soon mm. I don't want to jinx it by saying next week so I, d I didn't say next week <laughs> okay All so right. uh, maybe just return back a little bit to subscription yes. just to um, drive the point home yes. uh, to everyone that hasn't uh, taken a look at the subscriptions please do so yep. even if you are not in a position to subscribe just not just right now uh, if if you find this service of any use of, of any value please take a look at it and let us know in the little chat icon below uh, yeah on the on the bottom, bottom right. of the page um, and let us know if this is something that could work for you uh, what would you change what are you missing from a certain tier of subscription um, and so on. So, um, yeah, we, we really are trying to make it work for you as much as possible. Yep. So let us know what are your desires, what are your ideas, what do you need, what you don't need, um, and all that. So we can um, prepare a subscription pack that fits your needs as best as possible. Yep. So to make it even clearer, we want you to subscribe. Please subscribe. <laughs> and um, I guess we'll wait for a few seconds to see if there's any more questions popping up. But other than that, yeah, I think we've covered most all of the it. Topics for today, all the three topics. So, for uh, anyone coming in late, we talked at the start about the uploads and uh, how we can accelerate them by using a cloud service in between your computer and uh, our data center in Europe. 
So if you're somewhere far away, then you can use that to speed up the, the upload significantly. It's not deployed yet, but we previewed the functionality last uh, webinar and this webinar, we can say that it's, it's working very well and uh, it'll be deployed soon. Then we talked about the maintenance problems that mm -hmm. we're facing and how we're going to attack those, how to raise the quality and the dependability of the gear, you know, how to make it uh, be more precise in to have the stereo image work all the time, to have uh, the, 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 the settings always come up with the exact same sound as you left it. That requires us to monitor the tubes and, and other uh, things in the machines and uh, we've set up uh, some ideas to schedule how to do that and made a machine for uh, testing the tubes so that we know what's happening and what to fix and what to monitor and lastly we talked about subscriptions yeah. and we just want your feedback on whether or not uh, they are okay and uh, if there's anything stopping you from getting them just let us know in the chat and that I think, I think that's sums it. it up yeah so thanks for having us yeah thanks, thanks for, for watching. questions um and well see you next week yeah next week bye 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 Ah, the Nicha Migat. Who is the lover? Smooth Praxis.